brought to you by the World Bujutsu Federation International. Kasakai Doru Kempo. With me, Joe Rebello. Hi, we're back here. We're going to go into more exciting action in regards to the Kihon of Basics in Kasakai Doru Kempo, or Kasakai Do Kempo. And we've been talking about Suki, linear actions, Uchi, circular motions, and Yumi Waza, the use of finger techniques. Now, what we're going to be working on right now, we're going to be continuing on a journey. And again, we were working last on Nukite, so now we're in section two. So now let's continue on our journey, shall we? Let's. All right, uh, we were talking at the time about Nukite, so let's go into our next motion. I'm going to move up a little bit closer, and we're going to talk about our next action, which is going to be Toho. Now, I want to talk to you again. We're not talking about the film studio. We're talking about the sword peak hand. Now, some people call this the tiger mouth. Again, this section here, the hard bony surface at the top of your hand. And again, uh, some, be call, some people call it Hit a basami. Again, if I come up closer, striking in like so. Others people call it koko, the tiger mouth. Want a cup of koko? The next action we want to work on and talk about is uh, keto. Now, now keko, I should say, which is the chicken beak hand. And this is striking with all five of our fingertips in a pecking action. Now, again, we take all five of our fingers, placing them together, bracing them with our thumb, so that the five fingers form that beak-like action. Now, again, some people call this wash -a day Hey, let's talk about that for a moment. The wash -a day the eagle hand. Oh, trees are attacking me. Uh, um, nothing worse when the props not to attack you in the set. You never know. But anyway, um, wash -a day And the reason I'm mentioning it is washi is eagle. But they is hand. Now, when we hear, we think of karate with a T. In some instances, when animals or certain words are placed with the word te or hand, the T sound is switched to a D sound. So, washi de. Now, again, the key ingredient is that pecking action. Strike with all five of your fingertips into various pressure points and vital points of the body. Let's continue on. Uh... We want to talk next about uh, one of the most popular strikes, which is haito, which is the inner knife hand. Some people call it the reverse knife hand or the ridge hand. And again, striking with that same hard bony surface. And again, what we're doing here is we're going to be, again, striking like uh, in different configurations. But it's really tucking your index finger, right, or your thumb into the center of your hand and protruding the bone in line with your index finger. That's the key. Uh, some people also refer to this particular action as se katana. And here's another reference we have to talk about with Japanese. A sword is considered a to on its basic understanding, or a katana. Now, when you take the word katana and you add another word to it in certain instances in Japanese syntax, like se katana or reverse hand sword, then the K sound is switched to a G sound. Just like the word keri for kick is switched to giri when you say megeri or yoko giri or shiro giri, just as when you add a chain to a single comma, it switches to kusari gama. Now, from here, let's go on to our next strike, which is the shote, and that is the palm heel. And again, striking with the bottom of the heel of our palm. Again, it's really interesting because some people call it shote, and other styles call it te sho. But in either instance, it's the heel palm. From there, let's go on to the koke, or bent wrist strike, also known as, in some styles, as the kakuko, kakuto. Striking here with the bent wrist section. Now again, I'm going to talk about this... Um, there is the bent wrist like so, there's also one taught in certain kempo styles, called the chicken wrist, in which the fingers are flexed out. Again, some are done with fingers together, some are done with fingers flexed out. 
Again, certain Hawaiian Kempo systems like Kata Zempo Goshen Jutsu, Shaolin Kempo as well, also utilize the chicken wrist, upward inward. Again, we talk about configuration as far as various strikes later. But again, this is not known as Koken, or also, with fingers together, also Ka Ku To. Next, we're going to go on to one of the most popular strikes utilized in the art of Kempo, which is the Tetsui. The iron hammer, the bottom of the fist. Some people call it the fist edge. Also, I've heard it used occasionally as hansui, but normally uh, either tetsui, iron hammer, or kensui, fist hammer. Now, from there we go on to our next strike, which is going to be shuto, the knife hand. Again, utilizing the bottom of our fist in an open hand configuration. And some people refer to this, again, we talked earlier about segatana. This term, it's te katana. Again, te, of course, hand, katana, switching with both words placed together into gatana. From here, we talk about the, some people refer to it as the kote, some people refer to it as the ude, and that's the wrist or forearm. Now, some people will refer to the wrist area in this configuration here on the sides and underneath. Again, they're referred to the, as also going up into the ude or forearm. Again, the top is hira, the sides are omote, and then ura is called for the, for, the, for the undersection. Again, we talked about omote and ura earlier. We were discussing about um, right side and left side. Again, you know the terms in Japanese as migi and hidari. But omote and ura are also configurations in relationship to alignment for different parts of the body. If we use our radial bone, again, ude, again, the top meat, or the ulna bone across the bottom, again, ude, forearm. Some people use the term kote as well to, to refer to that section of the arm. Go figure. Now, let's go on. Uh, let's continue on now to the oya yubi iponke. Thumb fist. Now. The thumb fist, and then we're going to move in close again, is the configuration of the thumb knuckle at the top of the fist used in the conventional Okinawan fist. Again, striking with that thumb. Again, underneath, side. We'll elaborate on configuration as far as alignments with different strikes later. But the key agree we want to understand is closing our fist, pressing our thumb against the top or reverse hammer fist, and striking with that knuckle of the thumb. From there, earlier we talked about the uh, Urakin or Hiken, uh, Riken rather. Now we're going to talk about the Haishu, which is the back hand. Again, it can be utilizing the open hand to strike. Now, again, you'll hear another term, Hirate or Hirate. Again, six and one half dozen the other. Um, let's talk about Ate for uh, in a couple of instances. You'll see Ate, A T E. Again, you hear the art in jiu-jitsu and judo, atewaza. And again, that's utilizing various strikes in relationship to the art of judo. Uh, so again, sometimes you hear hirate or hirate. Or hirate. Hirate. Now, again, from the backhand strike, we're now going to go into seruto, the ox jaw. Now, again, the ox jaw is the, or sometimes called the palm edge. It's this bony surface right at the end of your palm heel. There's a hard bone right here, and it's right at the end of the ulna, and it matches with the bones of the wrist, and right at that, that point right there, that hard bony surface, many people refer to that as the ox jaw, the jaw of the ox. And uh, we, we hear the, the classic biblical uh, story of, uh, again, uh, Samson smiting the, the Philistines with the jaw of an ox. And again, this hard bony surface is struck in different configurations and alignment. It's a devastating strike. Now, if we talk about that, we've got, now we're going to go on to our next action. And we're talking about Kuma Day. Now, Kuma means bear. So this is a bear paw day. Again, normally T-E, but again, we put Kuma with it, the bear. It switches from a T sound to a D sound. Kuma Day. Now, kumade basically is the same thing as uh, hirake or hirake, where the hand is closed in a four-fist configuration. 
However, the striking surface is not the edge of the knuckles, but rather the, the heart of the palm striking in like so in different configurations and alignment. And again, the most popular way I've seen it utilized, again, is, is boxing the ears. But again, that, that uchi motion of a circular motion in regards to kumade. Now, uh, if we're, when we're talking about kumade, uh, there's another term we want to use. We want to talk about in Kung Fu, we call it the leopard's paw. But again, this is a leopard paw palm. So again, but kumade, the bear's hand. Now, from there, we're going to go on to keto. And keto is the chicken head wrist. But it's not what you think. You think it would be like what we talked about earlier with kakuto and, and, and that, but it's not. Rather, uh, you'll see it utilized in Wei Chiru and other systems where when we flex the hand like so, we have the ox jaw dropping down, the hand flexing up, and again, this thumb knuckle, this flexed thumb strike, striking with the knuckle of the thumb in this configuration, and also this upper knuckle being utilized as well at the insertion point into the rest of the hand to strike. That is keto. Keto. Chicken head wrist, or again, the open hand flexed thumb strike. Striking with that portion of the thumb. Now from here, we're going to go next into oyayubi. Now, oyayubi is going to be the extended thumb strike. Again, we can, we can strike in this configuration with a closed thumb. We're hitching a ride by striking with our thumb. Now it can be extended like so, or press directly against the hand so that the thumb tip can be used in a striking fashion to various pressure points and vital points of the body. Now today our last strike that we're going to talk about, again this is our beginner introduction into Tsuki, Uchi, and Yubiwaza. And the last one we're going over for today from a Japanese orientation will be Yubi Basami. And that's the crab claw, again, or, or two-finger claw. And again, we haven't talked much about claws. That's more mainly configured for, uh, uh, again, what's with the Chinese orientation, which we'll talk about in our next section. But right now, we're, we're going to talk about the two-finger pincher-like motion. Now, there's two. Yubi Basami has the use of the two fingers acting as a claw, going into the eyes, the throat, and then the thumb knuckle is also included in that action. Now, I'm just going to refer to a couple of quick mentions. It's striking with the two fingers to the eyes, and then the thumb knuckle is striking the filter below the nose. It can also be used to the throat, and the thumb knuckle actually strikes the Adam's apple and holds it in place so you cannot swallow as it crushed the windpipe. Now, if we move the, 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 that knuckle out of the way and still utilize the configuration of these two fingers, again, the thumb and index finger, then that's referred to in some styles as shikyo. Shikyo. Now, there you have it. Again, thrusts, strikes, finger techniques, suki, uchi, and yubiwaza. So again, look at these different actions, at the basic form your hands into different weapons. In the Chinese, they call it iron fist or poison hand, closed fist or open hand strikes. And hopefully this has given you some basic insight into some of the actions involved in the art of Kasa Kaido Kenpo or Kasa Kaido Ru. This is Joe Rebello, known to many on the martial arts world and the internet as Kenpo Joe. And remember, and focus upon Kasakaido Rukempo and the World Bujitsu Federation International and the World Bujitsu Federation USA.